And now here we are for the last page, part three. So we've got multiple choice question here, number 11. A company makes two similar cylindrical containers. As soon as I see similar idea, uh, objects, I'm thinking this could be a DAV. The total surface area of the smaller container is 0.81 times that of the larger container. The total surface area of the smaller container is 0.81 times that of the larger container. Now we're talking about area here, but it's kind of weird that they give you the ratio in terms of a decimal, 0.81. But you could write that as 81 over 100, that's the fraction, and we could also write that as the ratio, 81 to 100. So they give you the area ratio. Now the question is, what do we want? The height, all right, height, that's a distance. Height of the larger container is 60 centimeters. What's the height of the smaller container? So what we need is height. Well, to find height, we have to know the distance ratio. We've got the area ratio, that's the A squared, B squared. How do we go back to A, B? We take the square root of both sides and that's gonna give us nine to 10. That is your distance ratio. Now here's what happens. We're gonna use this. The height of the larger container is 60 centimeters. What's the height of the smaller? So I'm gonna make a proportion. I'm gonna say 60 over X. Now that's the larger over the smaller. Because these are heights, that's a distance, I need to use the distance ratio. I cannot use 81 to 100. So I'm gonna use nine and 10, but I need the larger number up top, that's the 10, the smaller one is the nine, and now we solve, we cross multiply, so we get 10 times x equals 60 times nine, which is 540, divide by 10, and what we get is x equals 54. And that's your answer. The height of the smaller container is A. So there's a lot of stuff going on there. I think the decimal is the most confusing part. You've got to come up with the right ratio, in this case distance, and then you have to make the proportion. Don't stop here and make the proportion. Make sure you set it up consistently and then solve it. All right, number 12, I'm gonna change the phrasing of this a little bit. If all the dimensions, length, width, height, of a rectangular prism are, we're gonna say are one-third, and not decreased by one-third, but um, are one-third of the other object, which statement is true? Okay, the wording here is kind of weird. Um, if you have a cube, and let's use some easy numbers here that we can take a third. Let's say it's three, 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 length, width, height. If you decrease that cube to one-third of the original size, one-third of three is one. That would be decreasing it to a third of the original size. The question is, what happens to the volume? Well, this is a DAV problem where the ratio of the lengths or the widths or the heights is three to one. So what happens to volume? Well, I'm gonna raise those to the third power. Three cubed, three times three times three is 27. One times one times one is one. So what would happen to the volume? The volume would decrease, I wanna say two. It would become 1 27th of the other size. So if we decrease these sides to a third of the original, then the volume doesn't decrease to a third because if you change all three of these, it decreases to 127. Okay? It's a DAV problem. It's a little confusing the way that it's being asked there. But um, so since you change all three variables, this volume is 27, length times width times height. This volume is one. Okay, so that's number 12. Number 13 is similar, but not the same. If the height of a rectangular prism is decreased to one-third the original size, which statement is true? The question is, what happens if we take this cube again, OK, 
Okay, rectangular prism, we'll say 333. Three, three. What if you only change the height? What if we don't change the length and the width as well? What if we only change the height? So in other words, what's going to happen is it'll look something like that. The length is still 3, the width is still 3, but the height has been decreased to one-third of this size. One-third that length is 1. What happens to the volume? This is a case where just creating an example will make this more obvious. This volume is 27, 3 times 3 times 3. But this volume is not going to be 1. Length times width times height, 3 times 3 times 1 is 9. The volume is 9. Now if you compare that as a fraction, okay, uh, I'll take the smaller number. 9 over 27 reduces to 1 third. What happened to the volume of the smaller figure? It will be 1 third the volume of the larger figure. Why is it not 1 27th like in problem number 12? Well, in problem 12 we decreased every distance, every single length, every dimension. If you only change one dimension, it's not going to be cubed. It's not going to be 1 to 3 cubed. It's only going to be 1 third. The answer will be A, the volume would decrease by 1 third. Now if we were asking about area, um, or actually let's say what if we had decreased, changed two of these. What if we had changed this from 3 to 1 and this from 3 to 1? Then it would be 1 ninth. That would be the change in the area. Okay? Or it would be the change in the volume. It would be 1 ninth. Okay, so you've got to kind of think your way through these problems. The last one, number 14, this is kind of a fun one. If the diameter of Jupiter, diameter, that's a distance, by the way, is 11 times the diameter of Earth, how many Earths could fit into Jupiter? Um, if Jupiter's diameter is 11 times the diameter of Earth, that's an 11 to 1 ratio. 11 times bigger. How many Earths could fit into Jupiter? If you're trying to fill something or fit into something, we are talking about volume. So what happens is we're going to raise that to the third power. So let's go ahead and take 11, raise that to the third, and what we get is 1,331. So you might look at this, and then 1 to the third is 1. You might look at this and you say, okay, Jupiter's diameter is 11 times bigger than the diameter of Earth. Ah, that doesn't really affect the size that much. Jupiter is 1,300 times larger its volume. You could fit 1,300 Earths into Jupiter. It's pretty crazy. And that is the end of the notes.